Hey guys, and uh, welcome to WordPress Decoded. Whoa! Uh, yeah, awesome. Can't wait. Uh, this is a podcast uh, hangout on air where we chat about everything WordPress, uh, kind of break down information about WordPress, kind of what's new. Uh, today we're going to be chatting about uh, WordPress 4.0, some of the uh, information from there, things have changed, uh, things we can expect, and uh, also uh, Nate and I have been, just got back from WordPress, or WordCamp Columbus, uh, the fourth, I believe, in the uh, in the books under, under the, finished up, I should say, um, I believe it's fourth, right, Nate? For Columbus? Yeah. No, it's actually number six. Number six, sorry. Yeah. So six, six in the books for uh, WordCamp, and uh, I think they did a pretty good job this year. Um, can't wait to see what they have coming next year. Um, on that, I'm Brian Redder. I'm a developer here in Dayton, uh, and my co-host here is Nate Driver. You want to say hello, hello, Nate? Hello, all you web people. I am Nathan Driver, and I am in drinking wine. No, uh, I'm in Dayton, Ohio as well. Uh, I am kind of a web developer, digital media strategist, SEO guy. Awesome. Uh, and today with us, we've got two amazing guests, uh, also speakers at the WordCamp Columbus. Um, I'm guessing they just got back last night as well. Hopefully you guys are rested up. We've got Steve Grunwell and Phil Hoyt. Uh, Steve, you want to introduce yourself? Let us know about you, what you do, where you can find you. <laughs> Uh, I'm Steve Grunwell out of uh, Columbus, Ohio. So getting back was driving, you know, 25 minutes across the town. But um, <laughs> yeah, uh, this was my second WordCamp Columbus, my second time speaking at a WordCamp. Um, good time overall. Awesome, Phil. Uh, yeah, I'm Phil Hoyt. Uh, I'm literally sitting in a parking lot in Cleveland, Ohio, which is <laughs> where I also live. Um, yeah, I went to uh, WordPress Columbus as well, which was my third WordCamp, my second one speaking. Uh, I had a great time as well. Um, I don't really call it speaking as much as I yell at people and then they like absorb <laughs> tiny amounts of information. But no, it was a great WordCamp as always. I've never been disappointed, so super happy to be here. Awesome. Thanks, uh, both of you, for joining us. Uh, let's uh, jump into uh, 4.0. Um, I know I've, I've been working with it. I've been playing around with it. Um, you know what I see is great. Looks uh, looks good as always. WordPress does a great job making sure everything still works um, in the older versions, downgrading and everything. Um, you know the the two main things that I saw, and I think these are the two main things that they released uh, WordPress 4.0 with, were the uh, the grid view and the media, um, and the um, the sticky WYSIWYG editor buttons. Um, those are the two main things that I saw. Um, anything else uh, that you guys noticed? Uh, the biggest one to me was that... Um, like my said, personal favorite thing that they added was... Um, oh. Go ahead, Phil. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, yeah, my favorite one was actually the inline when you like just paste in a uh, YouTube link, the embed kind of shows up, which is something that my clients had a really hard time comprehending that just paste the link, and the video will show, I promise. Um, so that was kind of interesting to see. So that was my personal favorite new thing. Yeah, I noticed that too. That's a, That was a really nice feature. Um, kind of the WYSIWYG editors all together uh, that they've done the updates for, you know, it turned out really nice. Uh, Nate, you were, you had an idea? No, it was, it was basically the main thing that you had mentioned was the WYSIWYG, the sticky... And when I've talked to clients and I've kind of mentioned that, they kind of, their job kind of drops because these are clients that write a lot of content. So uh, when they have to go back and maybe make a list or, you know, bold an item, they have to, you know, go all the way to the top. And to them, this is like a huge feature. Right. Yeah, I know one of the uh, major complaints of uh, some of my clients were, you know, once you get scrolling, you're spending you know, three quarters of your time scrolling back up to the formatting and things. So I'm, I'm really excited about this, uh, that feature, uh, the toolbar being sticky once you start scrolling down. I think what's, what's really exciting about that too is for the first time, uh, the editor 
uh, from a client perspective, you could look at it and be like, wow, this is even easier to use than something like Microsoft Word because Microsoft Word has just been the bane of web developers' existence <laughs> forever. So to have people actually think like, okay, great, it's easier to write you know, using the WordPress editor rather than you know, writing it somewhere else and pasting it in, I think that's, that's really huge. Yeah. yeah. Especially yeah, during... I, th I think it was in uh, 391, right, that they added the, or they got rid of the paste from Word. Yes, and it just does it now. Yeah, it just. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. I always, I always said if you could write an email, you could write in WordPress, but now it would be great to be able to just say if you can write in Word, you can write in WordPress because people yeah. like that more. So. <laughs> well, that's that's what I used to say to people is when I, I, I would tell them that, you know, the best option is going to be a WordPress site, and they kind of cringe about it, and I'm like, look, if you can. <laughs> If you can write in Word, if you can use Word, you can use WordPress. It's it's as yeah. simple as that. So and they've they've just made it a lot easier. Definitely. Um, so my, you know, one of the sorry, Nate, go ahead. No, no, my question I think was going to correlate with what you were going to ask is, is it do you guys consider it a 4.0 release or is it actually a 3.9? What uh, what are we at? Two, three, four, nine, ten. I guess it would be. Yeah. So, what do you guys think? Of that? Is it a four point? Uh, yeah, I I hate to like <laughs> I hate to bash like the the volunteers that work on it, or whatever. And I I don't know if anybody else has read Pippin's um article about people kind of just bashing you know, four point being underwhelming because there are a lot of like refinement and uh, cleanup work that they've done and a lot of backwards compatibility issues that they've uh, dealt with and a lot of bug fixes but it, from a feature standpoint and a marketing standpoint when you're selling WordPress to someone you're like oh, four point is coming out like when when a new phone comes out you like oh what are all the new awesome features and this the, it, it's not a lot of new features but it's a lot of refinement for future development Oh. I think we lost Phil. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, you have mail. All right. All right, Steve, what do you think? <laughs> Honestly, it doesn't really bother me as much. Um, the team behind it has been very upfront about, you know, 4.0 is, you know, just the same as, like, 3.9, 4.0, 4.1. It's not going to be this giant, earth-shattering, you know, everything changes. Um and while it's a departure from what a lot of software companies do as far as versioning goes, um, excluding PHP, which is having all sorts of fun stuff. With, there's, I don't know if you've heard the debate about uh, should PHP, the next version of PHP, be um, PHP 6 or PHP 7? Because someone tried to do PHP 6 several years ago and it failed and they're worried about that. Um, but I think really with versioning numbers, it's... We're seeing a bit of a shift. I mean, look at, I, I have no idea what version of Google Chrome I'm running at this particular moment. I think it's like 39.6242. I, I, it's really, it's not a huge deal. So, um, and the fact that WordPress tries to be rather consistent um, in its user experience. It wants to always get better, of course, um, but it doesn't want to uh, say, okay, this is 4.0, and then a bunch of stuff changes, and clients freak out, um, and, you know, 20% of the web is like, oh, is this uh, a different platform than what I'm used to? Um, because I think WordPress is going to continue to be great, um, regardless of what we do version number-wise. Yeah, agreed. And, I mean, one of the topics I, we talked about... I think about once WordPress gets is... to a point where it's stable enough, where... Sorry, Phil, you've had a little bit of delay to go. Oh, keep uh, keep going with your your thought. No, it's it's fine. Yeah, you guys are working fine, and all of a sudden, it's going bad. <laughs> go ahead. Um, so I'm gonna try getting signal. The um, where where was I going? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, the the whole the discussion we had in uh, in Columbus uh, a couple days ago or yesterday actually was. You know, do the clients even care? Do they care that it's a 4.0 or a 3.10 or a you know 38,000 version release? Does does it really matter to them, or is it just one of those things that as developers we've been trained so much that you know a major release like this, the the major release numbers, you know, involve such big changes? 
I, I think there's yeah, certainly definitely... some validity to that point. Yeah, um, I don't. My clients definitely do not care what version they're on. I mean, as long as it works, that they're happy. But from a developer standpoint, yeah, we've been you know attuned to think a new number means a new feature. Yeah. What about you, Steve? I, you I totally agree that um, it's maybe not a big deal outside of the development community, but developers like to get you know really up in arms about stuff like this that. Really, at the, the end of the day, um, it's a new version of WordPress, and it's going to bring with it some cool stuff, and we're all going to be better for it. Um, so if they decide to skip to, you know, version 5, and then for a while do, like, 5, 6, 7, and then 7.1, 7.2, like, you know, that, that's, that's fine as long as it keeps being the, the dependable, flexible platform that we're used to. Right. Now, I have a question real quick. Are, do we have any iPhone users on here? Yeah. Okay. So I, I've never had an iPhone. I'm on an iPhone I've currently. <laughs> <laughs> I've never had a desire to use an iPhone. So, and I've never been a fanboy of Apple. So when they do the, the, you know, the iPhone 4, the 4S, the 5, did you see significant changes? Were you, were you one of those people that, you know, and this is nothing to say bad, but is it were you, ooh, it's a new one, it's a 5, or it's a 4S. I need to go get that because of this feature. What do you say, Phil, since you're actually on it right now? <laughs> from someone using, yeah, from someone using a 5 right now, and I'm, I'm a little jelly with the 5S just for slow motion video, but Apple's kind of geared themselves after the first couple releases that they don't really... They don't push so much the number. Even like with the iPad, they don't call it the iPad 3 or 2 anymore. It's just the iPad or the iPad Air. Um, they've kind of gotten rid of versioning numbers, kind of like much like where Chrome has, where, I mean, there is a version number for developers and whatnot, but it's just Chrome. You don't go like, oh, I have the newest version of Chrome, I just, or the newest iPad. So I think eventually, with hardware, it's a little bit different because there's physical things different, but yeah. Um, I think once with WordPress gets kind of stable enough where anybody can hit update on their plugins, themes, or uh, core, and nothing happens, I think we'll get to a version number that nobody cares about. Well, mm -hmm. especially as they start rolling out more of the auto-updating features. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, that's going to make it really exactly. kind of irrelevant what version you're running, unless you're running something before oh. the auto-updates are able to really um, be as seamless as they have been. And when, when was that? When did they start doing the, the manual or the automatic updates? Was that 3.9 or 3.9, I believe? 7, wasn't it? Was it 7? It was a little early in 3.9. Yeah. That's what I, 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 I thought so. Okay. Sorry. Oh, it's fine. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I, you know, overall, the, the overall feeling of 4.0 for me, it, it's a. WordPress itself is just, it's an, a great product, it's in a really great place, you know, powering over, what, 23% of the web now. Um, the whole WordPress team has done such a good job um, with all these updates. Honestly, I don't think it really matters. Uh, 4.0, 3.9, 2, 3.10, whatever they want to call it. As long as they keep the quality of WordPress up, right. I'll continue to use it. Um, yeah, it does kind of go against the uh, the whole versioning system, in my opinion, down down deep. But <laughs> Chrome kind of ruined that. What six years ago when they came out with, you know, started doing major major releases that were not so major. Sure. No, but I think you guys have an excellent point. Nobody cares. I think Steve, you mentioned like I just checked my. Chrome browser, you know, like about Chrome, and it's like version 36 point blah, 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 blah. I don't, it doesn't matter. It, you know, as long as each update, they, they give me a little bit more security, maybe a little feature here and there. Yeah. But in the end, it really doesn't matter. Right. It's not like we're using other platforms like Joomla or something where every time a new version comes off, you have to pretty much kill off your website and start over. So uh, You've done that by picking Joomla. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I, as long as WordPress keeps staying backwards compatible, which it will uh, to a point, and uh, keeps moving forward, I don't think I think sooner than later developers are going to stop caring and stop blogging about it being underwhelming. It's just going to be, hey, the next 
something cool is now here that wasn't here. Right. All right, so um, I think we've talked about 4.0. <laughs> <laughs> Enough. Enough with what's uh, what's out there and everything. Uh, let's move on to uh, WordCamp Columbus. Um, I know they had a little bit of a hard time getting some turnout, uh, mainly because uh, WordCamp New York City was going on at the same time. But, hey, we were at Columbus. It was great. I th- Personally, I think it was better than New York because uh, I've never been there. <laughs> <laughs> Um, what, what's uh, Steve? What is your your take on uh, Columbus? Uh, well, I had to miss WordCamp Columbus last year, so I only have 2012 and then um, North Canton from earlier this year to compare it to. Uh, the big thing was the move from Compu or from the Ohio Union at the Ohio State University to uh, Compu Suites in Upper Arlington. Um, it was a smaller venue, but it was also a considerably cheaper venue, which <laughs> meant that you know we got T-shirts. Um, we got to. I, I think it was a more intimate affair. Um, back in 2012, I know there were some rooms, especially for the developer track. Um, it was like the big student senate room or something, and yeah. never had more than half of the seats filled. Um, partly because WordCamp Columbus, at least that year, didn't have the developer turnout they were hoping for. Um, but at the same time, just you know, you get a big room and a very specialized topic, and you're only going to get so many people going in. Um, some of the rooms felt a little small this year, um, like uh, B and C. I know we're both pretty tight. A uh, few people standing out in the halls, but we also had the opportunity to kind of squeeze and make room. Um, some people, I think, were just being shy and didn't want to interrupt the middle of the session. Um, but overall, I, I think it was a, a great word camp, and Angie and the whole team, um, they did a great job setting everything up, and people uh, seemed to really enjoy themselves. Great. Uh, Phil, yeah. your, your I also, comment on it? Yeah, I had a similar experience. It was, uh, this is a, a WordPress Columbus uh, last year was my first... Uh, Club, uh, camp, and that was kind of cool. Um, I didn't know what to expect, though. I mean, I was kind of a... Uh, I considered myself a caveman developer, where I, like, shut myself off to the rest of the world for a while, and then I emerge a couple times a year for WordCamp, so it was super awesome meeting other passionate people, but um, it, it didn't have as many... Uh, last year, at least, not as many good developer talks, and I actually got my talk in, like, the main room, like, the, the last talk of the day, which was I didn't expect them to ever put like a developer talk in the main room for like kind of a key time. I, they always try to shove me into a tiny room somewhere, so um, <laughs> which it was kind of exciting to be in a uh, big room talking about developer stuff with a full room. It was really uh, interesting because um, that WordCamp has had a very user and marketing focus in the years past. So um, I thought that was a really cool push, and I think next year we'll even be have more developers. So. Um, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. I mean, I got to meet up with all the people that I saw at North Canton, you know, a little couple of the people I met the year before. It been, again, it was only my third, but yeah, it was a really fun time. I showed up a little late and had to leave a little early just because um, too much work on my plate, but I look forward to next year and Dayton as well. So, awesome. There we go. There's a shout-out. <laughs> uh, There's your shout-out, yeah. <laughs> I, I like Columbus, uh, just like you said, Steve, it was that venue change. I didn't go last year as well due to a, uh, a new baby, but I did go the year before, and the student union, it was huge, it was great, but at the same time, the rooms, you know, it took the full 15 minutes to get to the room, and that was yeah. very hard because at that time I was very kind of new to the WordPress community. I wanted to talk to people. I wanted to learn from developers. And I just wasn't able to do that. Now, this year, you know, obviously a more smaller venue, uh, two minutes to walk to the next, you know, co- uh, room, it was a lot better. But at the same time, it was cramped. It was a little friendly. Uh, but at the same time, I got more out of it from the sense of being able to sit down and actually talk to new people, meet new people, and be really up close and personal to presenters. Yeah, I, I have to say the uh, the community at at the Columbus Word Camp was definitely uh, very close. We we were able to talk uh, quite a bit with each other. 
um, you know, in the the what is it, the happiness bar. Yeah. Uh, we had quite a few people actually come through there too. So uh, it seemed like uh, WordCamp Columbus is not only getting uh, these developers and stuff, but they're they're getting new new people to WordPress out as well, which is great to see. I think it's really nice that. I mean, in Ohio, we have Columbus, North Canton, Dayton. Um, I guess, am I missing any word camps in Ohio? I no. think it's just the three. Just the three, okay. That's a three, but Michigan's but close. We have Ann Arbor coming like up in October. Everywhere. And... Yeah. Um, there are, there's meetups everywhere, like Phil said. Um, in fact, uh, Nate and I got uh, talking with someone uh, from Cincinnati uh, area that wants to... Uh, Start a meetup or has started one already? I can't remember. I think it's want to. They actually want, want to start it up. We want, yeah. Which is great to see. I mean, they're they're coming all the way from Cincinnati. We had people at North Canton, all the way from Cincinnati, all the way from you know across the country in North Canton. Uh, it's great to see them uh, coming out and supporting these smaller, I should say, smaller venues, uh, word camps and things, comparative to. You know the word camps, uh, San yeah, Francisco, York, and word camp San Francisco. North, New York, and all those kind of things. You know they they're still coming to our our word camps as well. And well, what I was getting with with some of these uh, the word camps in Ohio and uh, like Grand Rapids, Michigan is two weeks away, and it's you know a few hours to drive there. Um, so I think it makes it really easy for you know like who else is going up to Michigan? I'm I'm going probably twice in the next two months. Um, um, so, you know, I'll see you guys there, and then, you know, we'll get to catch up, and it'll just be, uh, that helps, you know, the community, and then I, I got to go in and just sit down and talk to some random guy, um, uh, Mike, and we ended up talking about, well, Guardians of the Galaxy before I saw it, um, so I was like, no spoilers, but, uh, <laughs> as I ripped my headphones out, uh, but it was just a really cool, you know, everyone's just very, very open, and um, you get people coming in from across the country, but you also get a lot of people who it's like, oh, you grew up, you know, a couple miles from me. That's really cool. Yeah. So, hi, and, and, yeah. and it's interesting, it's interesting because... What I tweeted, oh, it, was, it was great to put a... Oh, it was great to put a, a body to the the Twitter avatars I've been seeing for years. So <laughs> that was pretty awesome. My favorite tweet of the morning from you, by the way. Thanks. <laughs> and I was just gonna build off of what Bill, you know, you were, you just read my mind. I don't think I tweeted it, but it it was good to actually meet, you know, the people that you know that I follow on Twitter or maybe had interactions with. So it, it's cool to put that face, that gravitar to an actual person and actually be not limited to 140 characters. Right. Totally. And I think that's what WordCamp is really about. You know, yes, the presentations are good. Yes, I do learn about new things. Um, but it's more about the community and building that relationship. Yeah, when I when I'm doing meetups, I always I don't care if there's Wi-Fi. It's not about the technology. It's about the communication and the community. It's about you know getting to know everybody and talking about what we're passionate about, and less about physically doing what we're passionate about. It's because yeah. I have all the time in the world to sit down in my bedroom and code, but I don't have all the time in the world to like meet awesome people. Yeah. Great point. And, you know, no, no fault of the the organizers at all, but we were kind of forced to do that at uh, WordCamp Columbus. <laughs> uh, had a little bit of a Wi-Fi issue over there, but again, no, no fault of the organizers or the event staff there. It was just a, a limitation of the building. I think they had rented, um, which they were. I think they got it resolved throughout the day, which was uh, great to see. But um, you know, it, it forced us to, you know, if we're not in a session to actually talk with each other and learn what other people are doing in the community. Yeah, and I, I have to be honest, I was a little upset with the Wi-Fi because I found myself wanting to tweet and go, oh, this is an awesome, you know, session. I learned about this from this person, but then it was like, wait, I can't tweet it. 
let me just tell that person that I really enjoyed their talk. Yep. <laughs> and then I'll, I'll tweet it later. Then you can't favorite it. <laughs> right, right. Yep. So uh, they also had a, a Friday session. Did uh, any of you guys attend that? Didn't make it out to Friday. No? I unfortunately could not make it. Okay. I know myself and Nate were there. Um, we didn't really attend the session. We, we did talk to a few people that did. And, they, you know, it was the, uh, I, for, I forget what they officially called it, but it was uh, WordPress 101, basically. And, you know, right. they, they said they got a lot out of it. Um, they were really pleased with it. Uh, uh, Angie did a great job, they said, with it, presenting everything. Um, they had Jonathan Davis there as well, who um, kind of, he was one of the organi organizers, volunteers of the event of the day of. Uh, he came out and uh, chatted with him about e-commerce, um, things like that. But uh, I, I'm starting to see a trend of these um, WordPress 101s um, at the first day of WordCamp. What, I, I like it. I, I like the idea. It gets uh, newbies out uh, to talk about uh, WordPress, to kind of learn about it. Uh, new businesses uh, come out and figure out, you know, hey, maybe WordPress is the way we should go versus... Uh, some off-the-shelf e-commerce system. Um, you know, me personally, I hope to see these uh, pop up more and more often. Uh, you guys, uh, Phil, your thought on that? I love, yeah, I love the idea. Um, getting more people into the system and just uh, thinking about WordPress from a beginner level is really great, especially having an entire day devoted to it, so you're not accidentally sitting in on a talk that might be well over their head. Um, and they might get them prepped to get into those kind of talks uh, the day before. I've even seen some WordCamps uh, pair it with like some marketing and SEO and just general web development stuff that's a more entry level. And um, yeah, I mean, I think it's just beneficial to have an entire day devoted to newer users. Yeah. Steve, do you have anything? Uh, well, with WordCamp being relatively, you know, inexpensive. It also makes for a good client training if you get someone who maybe their company just moved to WordPress and you know they don't really understand what this thing is, but they're expected to be using it regularly. Um, it's a good kind of introduction of this is what WordPress is and you know the difference between a post and a page. Um, and, and like Phil said, kind of prime these people to to explore the areas that interest them more about WordPress beyond just you know this is. This is kind of what it is um, in four hours or however long the, the session was. Um, and I know I've, at the Columbus WordPress meetup, um, a lot of the time it tends to be a little more beginner, and Angie leads the, the thing more often than she should have to. Uh, but she's just fantastic at working with people who, you know, they come in and they're like, I've heard about WordPress, or you know, maybe I set up some, some shared hosting, and there was a one-click install. So I have, you know, I'm able to log in, and that's it. Um, how do I make something great out of this? And Angie's able to take people from, you know, I know nothing at all to like, hey, I have something that I'm able to to write and use and share and um, and be proud of. Um, so I, I'm a big fan of the trend uh, of kind of this beginner day, especially when it falls on a Friday, um, partly because if I needed user training and, you know, someone was like, well, we'll give you the day off of, from work and give you the, the ticket to WordCamp, um, I would be all over that. <laughs> Unfortunately, um, I'm a little beyond WordPress 101. Um, yeah, it's just a little bit. Well, that's, yeah, I mean, I think the 101 is good because I think Saturday is, like, the meat and potatoes. It, it's, you, you get, you, you can pick a la carte, you know, do I want a developer session, do I want a marketing, do I want a 101? But with that Friday class, the whatever you want to call it, I think it kind of brings them more, it eases them into WordPress and actually into the community. So, so they're not afraid to ask developers, hey, I know you just gave a talk about child themes or advanced custom fields. That sounds great, but here's my website, and I think I want to do this. How can I do that? You know, and I just learned about pages and posts and plugins, and I, I just bought you know, this theme. I want to create a child theme, or 
I thought I think it's Custom Fields Pro because of the things that you had mentioned. How can I do that? So I think that 101 kind of gives users over that fear. So I think that's a really cool thing that WordCamps really need to kind of emphasize a little bit more. It's like when you start college and, you know, they have the freshmen come in a few days early to go through orientation <laughs> and kind of like, we're going to get used to, you know, now you know where the union is and where your dorm is and how to <laughs> get to where your know, classes it's are. It's um, perfect. And then you get to start the, the crazy, you know, there's the, the things that everybody needs to know and then from there you, you pick and choose what you want to learn. Um, another great reason to have it is, I mean, we had five session blocks yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, so say you, you know, there was a rather beginner class and then something that was really interesting to you or another beginner class and you had to pick in that, you know, that time period. You really only got to pick five sessions unless you decided to jump around and then catch half of one session and then go catch half of another. But um, it, the fact that you can kind of get a lot of that stuff out of the way um, and open you up to explore the ones that are interesting to you. It's like when you've, going back to the college metaphor, when you finish your core curriculum, you know, and then you can pick the, the other classes that are actually interesting. You know, you've gotten the, I don't want to call it boring because it's, it's necessary, important stuff, but you've gotten that out of the way and now you're free to really, um, you know, pick the stuff that's going to shape who you are as, in the metaphor, a student um, slash human being slash whatever. Uh, but in the WordPress world, you know, what you're going to do with your site, how you're going to, to sell yourself and publish your content and um, put yourself out there. So, um, the yeah, metaphor, I got a little more good point <laughs> is, uh, the, the, the WordPress 101 Friday session. I, I really like it, that analogy. Uh, Steve, of you know, it it is like a college uh, with freshman orientation. Um, now I know with uh, uh, word. I think I might have to steal that for Dayton Word Camp, though. Yeah, I'll, okay. I'll try to remember. Right, <laughs> you Steve. I'm just saying. Well, there's a video record of it now, right? Yeah, so. there is. <laughs> oh crap! Damn it. <laughs> okay. And Anyone that's know. your confession of you stealing my metaphor. <laughs> Damn it! Oh. <laughs> All right, so uh, with uh, WordCamp Columbus uh, under wraps now and, um, you know, planning for next year uh, starts, I know uh, Angie's looking for more more help for next year. Uh, she did all of this. Uh, she had great volunteers helping her out, but, uh, you know, it, it, Nate and I have been through uh, setting up a WordCamp, and it is a lot of work. Um, and I know Angie's really looking for more work. Uh, helpers next year, not just for day of, but uh, for the organization. Um, I believe um, August 15th is their first meeting. Is it, I'm sorry, September. September 15th or September 12th. Um, if, you're, if, you're, if you're in the Columbus area and you're interested in helping uh, Angie out with the organization of uh, next year's uh, WordCamp Columbus, uh, shoot her a tweet uh, they're at WordCamp Cbus. Uh, you can tweet there or um, Angie, Angie Meeker. Yeah, Angie Meeker on Twitter. Uh, shoot a mess. Shoot her a message. Uh, shoot the WordCamp Columbus message on Twitter if you're in the Columbus area and want to uh, help out organize. Uh, they're looking for all all sorts of positions. Yeah, and as Brian mentioned, it, as people who actually organized and actually put on our first one this year, there is no little amount that someone could do to help out that means a lot to the actual organizers. Anything, five, ten minutes, uh, making a couple phone calls, answering a couple emails, updating a website, means the world. I can say from personal experience. So, yes. Yeah. Anyway. I, I did have one, one question, though, to you. To, Steve and Phil, and, and even you, Brian, was what is your ideal WordCamp? I know we WordCamp Columbus just ended. It was great. And New York City was going on. Miami had ended. Milwaukee, was I heard, was great. But what is your ideal WordCamp? And I might steal your ideas for Dayton. <laughs> uh, that's a hard one, Nate. <laughs> uh, okay, okay, let's... Go ahead, Steve. You first. Uh, 
I'd say doing away with the storms we had last or yesterday. <laughs> um, it wasn't bad before or after work again, but um, in the conference room where you and I presented, Nate, it was just you look out the window and it's just torrential downpour. And Phil, I think I saw when you came in, you got caught in the storm. Um, yeah, I drove through it. <laughs> that must have been fun. <laughs> yep, it was. Um, I guess one that doesn't end. That would be cool. <laughs> Holy crap. Uh, you know, well, I mean, that's what I, I mean. I hate to say it that way, but I love North Cantons because, you know, I we went from the conference center to the hotel and we just kept talking and then went back to the conference center the next day and then back and forth and just never ended. It was uh, a, a whole weekend just packed of WordPress talk. And um, that was really awesome. I, when I'm at work, nobody wants to hear me talk. So if there's like a way to like minimize the gap of no talking, that would be fantastic. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, I don't know if I can control the weather. <laughs> oh, come on, Nate. Not with that attitude, you can't. <laughs> but uh, for, I, I, for, for me, the, the, Ideal WordCamp is the one that not only gets out the uh, the newbies to come, but it gets the developers to come out. It gets the the power users, so to speak, uh, to come out. Just anybody that has any interest in WordPress, whether they're already fully experienced or you know from the beginning uh, have never even looked at WordPress.com, uh, get everyone all together and just help each other out because. Developers can definitely help out those new users, but believe it or not, those new users can really help the developers out too. Um, and that, that's my ideal word, word camp is where everyone just kind of uh, gets together, becomes one community in Word, WordPress. Yeah, that is good. All right, well, thanks. I'm, I'm jotting everything off. I'm recording everything, so. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so... I think that's a, a wrap for today. Uh, Steve, where, where can people find you? Uh, I'm on Twitter, GitHub, etc. Uh, at Steve Grunwell, G-R-U-N-W-E-L-L. -L. Uh, you can also visit my blog at stevegrunwell.com. Great. And Phil? Uh, I'm also on Twitter and GitHub. It's Phil Hoyt, all lowercase, one word. Uh, and also my website is philhoyt.com. Pretty much just Google Phil Hoyt and you'll find everything about me. My social security number, everything. <laughs> and that's uh, P-H-O-I-T. Yeah, let me see. I got my, my badge here. One second. <laughs> awesome. Great. So uh, uh, thanks, both of you, for coming on. Uh, for the first for one. For yeah, the first, the first uh, WP Decoded podcast. Uh, really happy to have you, and uh, hope to have you guys back. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks for having us. All right. You guys have a good night. You too. Thanks. Bye. Bye.